Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the just announced Nikon Z9. This is the first flagship mirrorless in Nikon's lineup. So when I had my briefing with Nikon the other day and they went through the specs and they talked about what this camera will do, I told them this is the first time in a long time that I feel like we've just stepped into the future. This camera is really special and it does a lot that represents just a breakthrough in camera design and technology. It is a huge shift and I wanna talk about why. So first of all, there is no mechanical shutter in this camera. Repeat that, there is no mechanical shutter. Everything is done using electronic shutter and the top speed that you're going to be able to get is 1 thousandth of a second. This is a huge breakthrough. So why is this different than what any other camera company has been able to do? So the challenge with electronic shutter is based in the fact that we have migrated towards using CMOS sensors as the standard. One of the problems that you have with electronic shutter is that anything that is moving in the subject because those lines are scanning, particularly straight lines, are gonna to start to bend and distort. So the Z9 has no mechanical shutter, but to give you a sense of the scan time of that sensor, like look at this image of this golfer. She's moving and that golf club is straight. Two things, so Nikon has designed a new sensor that supports a really fast readout speed, and then secondly, they have the X-Speed 7 processor that they've essentially thrown the kitchen sink at this thing. It is so powerful. In fact, this is the most powerful configuration I've seen on any full-frame mirrorless to date. Why is this significant? Well, it's going to allow several different things. So first of all, you're gonna get actual true blackout-free shooting. And so what it does is it uses a dual-stream technology, pulling that data off of the sensor. The processor is able to use one one of those signals for imaging and the other one goes directly to the OLED viewfinder. So you actually have a true blackout free shooting experience because it has its own dedicated signal. Now this also allows for a high speed shooting rate. So 20 frames a second raw plus JPEG, 30 frames a second JPEG only, and you're actually going to be able to do 50 frames a second high speed continuous shooting. And it's going to be an 11 megapixel JPEG in the end. There's some processing involved, but these are speeds that if you shoot sports or something that requires an enormous response to a lot of action, you're going to love what this camera affords you to do. This also gives you an enormous amount of power with autofocus. So first of all, the autofocus speeds, the autofocus will actually be able to adjust and calculate for 120 frames a second, which is amazing. But the other thing that's really cool is because you have a much more robust processor in here, anytime you have a mirrorless camera that supports some kind of object recognition autofocus, so whether that's IAF for humans, animals, uh, objects such as planes or cars, it uses different algorithms to do that. So typically with cameras, you have to switch between those algorithms. In other words, the processor can only really handle one at a time. So you switch it to people, you switch it to animals, you switch it to birds, whatever that is. Well, with the new Z9, you don't have to switch it at all. It just has everything in the processor at once and it just intelligently recognizes. So this is a huge step up also. Of course, if you shoot video and you want to shoot in 8K, you will love the fact that this camera supports 8K. It speeds up to 30p for over two hours of recording. Let's go through some of the other specs on this camera because there's a lot more. So first of all, let's talk about the physical construction here. So this is as durable as the D6. So it's a flagship design. It's got a magnesium alloy chassis, pro body with integrated vertical grip. So it is a larger camera. It's got the Nikon familiar layout. If you've used Nikons and come from DSLRs, it is dust and moisture resistant. It features the light up buttons or the button illumination. What's interesting is there is a sensor shield. So essentially what this means is on top of the sensor, there is a layer that acts a lot like the coatings they use on lenses that repel dust and dirt. This will give you another layer of protection for keeping dust off of the sensor. There's also a safety door that can be closed to protect the sensor and don't get mistaken, it's not a mechanical shutter, it's just a safety door. We have a quad VGA electronic viewfinder as well as a four axis 3.2 inch LCD. It has vertical tilt as well as horizontal, so it is not fully articulating, but it's going to allow a lot of versatility for still shooters. We also have in-camera vibration reduction safety lock. We have the same battery chamber essentially as the D6. It's going to use the ENEL18 battery, which is a higher capacity battery. We have two CF Express Type B slash XQD slots. It is Kensington lock compatible. One button multi-setting custom arrangements. It supports voice memo. We have built-in GNSS. This camera also supports a 1000 base T wired lawn connection. So this is going to be faster than the D6. So professional photographers that need to use FTP and a wired type 
configuration or want to do tethering, this is going to support a much faster transfer rate. We also have a faster startup time. Nikon are saying that this is 2.5 times faster than any of the Z cameras. I talked briefly about the autofocus system. It's clearly the fastest autofocus tracking of any Nikon to date. It can do follow focus up to 120 frames a second. Another key thing about this is there is a new starlight view that's going to replace the low light autofocus that will allow you to detect focus at minus 8.5 EV. For video shooters, I mentioned that this camera supports 8K up to 30P with full sensor readout and no crop. You're going to get over two hours of 8K 30P recording. Of course, it also supports 4K, but we have high frame rates with that as well. So full sensor readout, 4K up to 30P, 60P. When we get to 120P, there is a 2.3 crop, but you can shoot in 120P. Nikon are also talking about future firmware upgrades. We're going to get 12-bit in RAW. This is a new RAW format, Nikon RAW. You're going to be able to record this internally. We'll also have ProRes RAW internal at 4K 30p. Some audio upgrades are coming as well. We're going to get 24-bit linear PCM sound recording quality, which will be compatible with professional high-quality microphones. We've got video file support for H.265, ProRes 422HQ, H.264, and coming in a firmware upgrade, I mentioned ProRes RAW HQ as well as in RAW. You're going to be able to get 33 megapixel and 8 megapixel frame grabs in camera from 8K and 4K photos respectively. We've got color options for flat profile as well as N-Log and HLG. Over two hour recording time limits and HDMI output latency is reduced in half versus the Z6 II. And the camera comes in at $5,499 US and will be available at some point this year. But wait, there's more. This wasn't the only Nikon announcement today. We've got a 100 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to f5.6 zoom lens. This is in the S line. It will work with teleconverters. There's also a 24 to 120 millimeter f4. And then we have a development announcement for a 400 millimeter f2.8. There's also a new FTZ adapter development announcement. So not much has changed, unfortunately, with this adapter. It's pretty much the same as the other one, but it has a redesigned foot, so it's a little bit easier to use with certain lenses. One thing I want to point out, I don't really do a whole lot of videos these days where I don't actually have the camera to show you guys. I don't have any experience with it that I can talk to. I don't really know what it does when you actually get it and use it. And so I did make an exception on this because to me, what Nikon have done with this camera, especially at this price point, is they've blown the doors off the joint because we now have a camera that represents a true step up, I think, in power to previous cameras that we've seen in the mirrorless lineup. We finally have a camera that actually does not even include a mechanical shutter. And when you consider this and the fact that there really aren't any moving parts, electronically anyway, in the camera anymore, this becomes a true solid state camera. And I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with this. Nikon did tell me that they would be sending me a model soon. So as soon as they do, I can't wait to shoot on it and share my experience with you guys. So I would love to know what you guys think. So drop me a comment below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.